Listen, I offered to dress up as a pretty lady for this, but the people demanded the bear. Not like the chef show. We're talking about Baldur's Gate 3 again. I have recently finished my fifth full playthrough of that game, and sometimes it's the only thing that gets me through my day. Just knowing that when I get home, I'm going to have a menagerie of little guys waiting to save the world with me. Today, we are ranking and re-ranking the 10 Baldur's Gate 3 companions in new and exciting ways, and I fully expect and encourage you to disagree with me on some of these rankings and tell me how you would have made the lists if you were in charge in the comments below. But of course, I'm in charge today. <laughs> So you all have to listen to mine. I've debated many of these lists with my friends, and I'm not sick of doing it yet. This video will contain spoilers for the companion quests of Baldur's Gate 3. We're talking about the companions. Their quests are important. They're my best friends. I love them. If you're wondering why I chose Halson as the style icon inspiration for this video, um, I actually didn't. That honor goes to my patrons. I gave them six choices, and 40% of them selected the bear. That is so silly. <laughs> I love those guys. If you want to join them and make equally silly choices in the future, plus get videos a week early, plus get an extra video every month, plus get once upon a time sneak preview content, you can find us over on patreon.com slash Whipjack. But right now we've got some baby girls to rank. Let's get started. What's our first criteria? Which one of the companions is most likely to lead the group? If you're not there, if there is no designated, this is the origin character that's in charge, this is your custom lineage character that's in charge, this is your dark urge, if that's not there, if the game simply unfolded without your say-so at all, which companion <laughs> is taking charge? Because some of them are simply not built for it. In Dead Last is my man, Minsk. You can play the entirety of the game without ever hearing his name. Many people listen to me rank these characters and they hear the name Minsk and they go, hang on, I've played that game and there is no Minsk. Did you make up Minsk? No, I did not. You can easily play the game without knowing who Minsk is. And if you get him, you are already halfway, more than halfway through act three. Also, just no one's leaving him in charge. Not a single soul wants this guy to be the one in charge of stopping the absolute. Man was already mind controlled by them once. In ninth place, I've got Halson. Please don't put him in charge of anything else. He hated being first druid of his grove. He never felt like he deserved the position. He just wants to save his immortal child best friend and then vibe, just hang out in the trees forever. If it was up to him, if you could do it, you would stop the absolute without ever actually entering the city of Baldur's Gate. Also, he has no skin in the fight. He doesn't even actually have a tadpole in his head, so he would just be a weird choice. He'd be a weird choice. He's just an agreeable gentleman who wants to help, and he'll go wherever you point him. But he will do much better with somebody pointing him. In eighth place, I put Minthara only because you don't actually get her in your team until mid-act two, if you get her at all, and there's no way the team as assembled trusts her at all and wants to follow what she wants to do. I think she definitely wants to be in charge, um, but she is getting vetoed hard. Shadowheart, amnesia queen, holder of the artifact. I do think she could do it, and she would be a, a decent choice. I also think that she's very full of self-doubt and doesn't hide it at all, and I think she's another one that loves following orders. Uh, she's never been in charge of anything before, and I don't feel like she would be jumping to lead a group of weirdos save the world. I don't get those vibes from her. Astarian's another one that definitely thinks he's the best choice, and he has the charisma to back it up. Also, being the only guy who can consistently open locked doors and chests means you're gonna be on most of the quests. You're gonna get brought along and be at the front of the group a lot. That's sort of leaderish. He is really focused on his personal quest, uh, but who among them isn't when you think about it? This is gonna be a really tadpole eating heavy sort of group with, with him at the helm. He loves those worms. In fifth, I put Gail. Gail's another one who definitely thinks he's the best choice, um, but if he's in charge, everyone else is constantly roasting him um, for his ex-girlfriend situation, his fashion sense, his hair, his inability to be conscious at the end of combat. They're not following Gail if there's somebody higher up this list willing to take 
on the mantle. And I've played a Gale Origin where he was the one leading the party. And honestly, sometimes it made the rest of them feel out of character. That they were just letting him call the shots. And I trust him with my life. I do. I've also played a Shadowheart Origin. That also felt weird sometimes. I think he'd do a better job than Astarian. I think when we get into Act 2, if we had an Act 1 Astarian being charged and an Act 1 Gale being in charge, I think the party would feel better about Gale being in charge by that point. I don't think that Carlac thinks that she's the best choice to be the leader. I don't think she would be jumping for that mantle. But I do think that everyone else on the team loves her so much that they're very willing to listen to her thoughts and her desires and kind of follow her lead. She's also from Baldur's Gate and remembers being from Baldur's Gate and has history with one of, like, the big bads of the story. I think it would be a very uh, goody-two-shoes sort of playthrough, but she would let Astarian eat the worms. So, Jahira's third. I know that she doesn't actually join you until Act 3. And I know that I said Minthara's solo because she doesn't join you till mid-Act 2. And Act 3 is later. However, it's Jahira. Pretty much everyone would still immediately step aside and let her start calling the shots. Have you seen her? Have you even met Jahira? Runner up, I've got Will with a Y. Man was raised to be a leader. His dad was the Duke of Baldur's Gate. He's a good man with a ton of charisma, a lot of people skills, and a spooky magic pact to back up all those morals he's holding on to. <laughs> he's coming in with a deep connection to the city of Baldur's Gate, the place they're all going, ties to the primary quest in Act 1 with the Grove, which... Hilarious. Um, can I just say that the man fell out of a Mind Flayer ship and immediately walked himself to the nearest group of people in need of a hero figure and <laughs> just started training children how to sword fight? That's insane. And his dad is basically like a senator. And also his dad is a recurring quest item. Will makes so much sense to be the face of the party, even though he definitely doesn't want to be a duke and probably doesn't want to be in charge of this group of people. He's just so dang good at it. Hear me out. Hear me out, okay? Lazel at number one. She comes into the party saying she knows 100% the way to cure them all. Her alien people have a solution. They just have to go get it. She will vouch for all of them, and get them all cured, even though that's basically high treason. Right out of the gate, she's got plans, she's got solutions, she's got aggression <laughs> and drive. But she also doesn't stop anyone from taking the time to save the Emerald Grove, or befriend a dog, or rescue a damsel in distress from a hag. The party does what they need to do on their way to getting to the Githyanki crash, even if she is their leader. And then she takes them through the Githyanki crash, believing that she's ending the mission, that she's saving them all. Obviously it doesn't work, okay? Lazel's plans, her solution does not come to fruition, but uh, you should not be going in, into the Githyanki crash until near the end of act one. Don't try that. Level up a couple times first, okay? By the time they get through that and that doesn't work, everyone would be so used to listening to Lazel and nobody's died yet. Nothing's gone wrong yet if it ain't broke. Like, when you're kind of the main character in Act 1, I feel like it would just set a precedent. Lazel for president, as far as I'm concerned. Next. Which companion is the tallest? Now, most of them don't have cannon heights, and if you stand them right next to each other, um, most of their models are, like, the same size. But don't worry, I asked them all. And they told me how they would line up in height order. Also, why are none of them tiny? No, no tiny companions? Halfling representation, where? The absolute shortest party member is Lazel. Tiny. Tiny baby. Angry, tiny baby. Like a little venomous snake. She's so small. Five foot nothing Lazelle is so real to me. Still built like a tank, but like a really little tank. Minthara carries herself like a very tall woman, but I know that she is small. Taller than Lazelle. 
Definitely still taller than Lazelle, who's itty-bitty sized, but uh, still quite small. She's compensating. Also, elves in D&D are shorter than humans, if we're going lore accurate, which we all know that I care very deeply about staying lore accurate. Larian Studios says that Astarian is five foot nine. That's pretty tall for an elf in D&D canon, and I don't think he gets to be tall for an elf. The only way that I'm down for that is if everybody else in the party, other than these two, obviously, is taller than him anyway. You don't want to hang out with gnomes? You're still going to be the shortest one in the group. Everybody else gets to be bigger than you. In seventh place, I put Gale because I don't think Gale is that tall. But more importantly, I think Shadowheart and Gale should be exactly the same height. And that height should be exactly one inch taller than Astarium. I don't think either of them should let him live it down. If he ever starts getting too dramatic, they just silently stand on either side of him, both just this much taller than he is. He would hate it. So bad. And Shadowheart would think it's the funniest thing (laughs) she's ever done. It would make her so happy and jovial that she would renounce the lady of loss and pain and misery right there. She just needs a good bit. It's important to me that Jair is pretty tall in accordance to the, for some reason, time-honored position of tall people being put in charge of organizations, and she is the high harper. Um, For some reason, people like to literally look up to their leader, so I think it just makes sense. She just looks smaller because she's usually standing next to Minsk, knocking dangerous things out of his hands, so you wouldn't know. Next up, I've got Will. I do think the horns make him look even taller, but even without them, that's a tall man to me. That's tall man energy to me. It's so much easier to twirl people if you're a little bit taller than them. He could do dramatic dancing lifts so much easier. Will would love swing dancing, actually. Number one in best at swing dancing, Um, but that list is so obvious that I, I don't need to do it here. Third is Minsk. Minsk is big. We can all see and understand that Minsk is big. He's top three big for sure. But you will never convince me that he is taller than Carlac. Carlac's gotta be bigger than Minsk. I need them wrestling in the middle of the Elf Song Tavern just because Minsk is so excited to meet another reckless weirdo, even bigger than he is, that can put up a fight. He would be so excited. She's so big strong that she would actually be a challenge for him. Carlac is so big strong that she made Shadowheart blue screen <laughs> upon first meeting. She looks like she could pick me up and carry me to safety. Come on. I'm almost disappointed I can't put Carlac at number one. Uh, but also, I can't put Carlac at number one because... Halson. An elf with the presence of a bear? Indeed. This man is seven feet tall to me. He's absurdly large. He, in canon, has responses at the ready, little comedic quips for when somebody points out how big he is. It's like when guys in our dimension have things at the ready for how's the weather up there? Do you play basketball? Somebody comes up to him and they give him the, you're really big for an elf, and he hits them with the, I am? (laughs) That's Ken. I'm not even making that up for this bit. He does that. Comically large man. Nine feet tall for no reason. I love him. Next. Which companion would you choose to be stranded on a deserted island with? How did we get on the island? I don't know. I don't know. But if I've got to pick one Baldur's Gate character to be there with, I know who I'm not picking. I'm not picking a Starian. Because neither of us are getting off that island alive. We're not making it three days. I'm going to ask him to forage, and he will simply fall over at the thought of performing unassisted manual labor. And then he'll eat me. Right above Astarian is Minthara. Because I do think Minthara's getting off that deserted island. I don't think I'm getting off the deserted island. Pieces of me? might get off the island? It's not really what I'm going for. Eighth place, I've got Shadowheart. I love 
Shadowheart. We are going to be stuck on that island forever. She's just going to kind of brood while I fail to remember how to properly evaporate seawater to create fresh water, and then we will die. Is Char going to help us? No, she is not. I think Gail would have a better attitude about the whole thing, but I put our chances in about the same place as Shadowheart. He might have spells that could be more useful. He can, like, teleport and telekinesis more than she can, and sending, which they don't uh, do in Baldur's Gate 3. But uh, he's a D&D wizard, so he could send a message to anybody in the whole plane to maybe get us rescued if he felt like it. I, no, cler- clerics get that spell too, actually. you know, I'm keeping them in the same place. We're going to say it's for his, his can-do attitude. Neither of them have practical survival skills. And Mistra's not going to help us either. You might think that sixth place is too low for Halson. I think that Halson would actually be a little too into the deserted island. And while I think that we could build a beautiful life there on that island, um, I don't think we would ever leave. And maybe that's what you're going for, but me personally, I like living in buildings. Fifth place choice is Lazelle. She would be so mean to me about my lack of survival skills, but goddamn, if she would not keep me safe and alive. We will both complain the entire time we're there, but it'll get done. I think it'd be so fun to be stuck with Minsk on a deserted island, and I also think that man's a ranger. He's, he's a ranger. That's the guy that you want to be in charge of survival-based missions. And if you're thinking, yeah, I do want a ranger in charge, but I don't want it to be Minsk, Minsk comes with Boo. Tell me that Boo is not some sort of eldritch being that wouldn't be able to help us out in this scenario. Lie to me. Lie to me. Third place, I've got Will. Will was out there blading the frontiers. He's lived alone in the wilderness, and he would be excellent company. That is a man who would patiently get us to a spot on the island where we could live a little more comfortably and would be able to actually think of a plan to get us rescued and give us both roles in that plan to get it executed. He's probably the one I'd have the best time with overall in this situation. Second is Carlac. Oh, because she's so big and strong that she'll be able to make a shelter and keep you safe. No, 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 no. It is because she will burn down the entire island as soon as she starts getting stressed about how we're trapped and it will create such an incredible big fire and smoke that we will get noticed and rescued 100% of the time. Oh, then you'll get burned. The ocean is right there. Idiot. We'll hang out with the fish until the ocean firefighters get there. However, Jahira will run that deserted island like it's the Navy. I will be run... Absolutely ragged as she assigns me tasks that I do not know how to complete. But they will get done, and we will get rescued. Or, if we don't get rescued, we will make it home on our own. No fail scenario. It's gotta be Jahira. Next! Which of the ten companions is most likely to romance a Starian on their own accord? Obviously, any origin character can romance a Starian if you're controlling them. But who is actually the most likely to put in the time and the care to fix the vampire and also smooch the vampire? Well, it's not Minsk. Minsk is not romancing anyone. Minsk is not even an option. I think Minsk is so fun. He's great. He's adorable. He's not romantically pursuing the vampire. You know who else isn't romancing the vampire? Little Miss, he has been deprived of blood and freedom for so long, he is now addicted to both. That's not something you follow up with, and I'm going to smooch him about it. That's something you follow up with, and I'm ready to put him down if need be. Also, Minthara is not like a project. She's not going to put in any effort to fix him. It's not her. In 8th, I've got Jahira. Not because Jahira does not deserve love again after being widowed. She absolutely does if she wants it. Um, I don't think that she wants it with the personification of the sassy man apocalypse. However, imagine him as the stepdad to her five children. She has 
young children still at home. One of them was like six, but more than that, some of them were like 20. Imagine you're 20 and your mom, okay, your <laughs> widowed mother <laughs> brings home a starion. You would immediately start Googling all of the ways to inconvenience vampires and make them a part of your daily life and your home. She's not doing, she's not doing that to her family or herself. I know that you can romance Astarian as Shadowheart when you're playing her. People have done it before. I cannot see them, cannot comprehend them as anything other than bitchy best friends. I'm sorry. They're drinking wine and gossiping and sniping at each other when their feet hurt as they walk down the risen road. And they're, they're sitting in silence on the roof of the Elfsong Tavern after they finish their personal quests. And then they're, they're threatening to push each other off the roof about it. I can't picture them smooching. It makes my brain shut down. I just, I just, I reject it outright. I don't even know why. Yes. Astarian is on this list. Um, yeah, Astarian is vain. Astarian is self-absorbed. Astarian is the only one who really knows what Astarian needs, except he doesn't know that. And also, he's full of self-hatred. Astarian would spend one sordid evening with himself and then feel gross and guilty about it for the rest of his life. Also, he does not have the time and patience to fix an Astarian, if there were two of them. Mm-mm. He's going to go romance Carlac. Fifth, I've got Lazelle. To my understanding and awareness, Lazelle and Astarian are the only ones who will unprompted sleep together at the tiefling party and then tell you about it later if you're not playing or romancing either of them. Um, so, yeah, Lazelle is interested in that part of the romance, but I find it unlikely that Astarian at that point in the game would be the kind of partner that she needs to open up and further her emotional quest and journey. So I feel like she would actually be the one who shuts that down and doesn't let it go any further. But she does comment about his performance being good. So <laughs> it'll probably last till mid-act two. And then she cuts it off. That's so sad for both of them, actually. <laughs> Hassan's interested in everyone. He's chomping at the bit. He would love to romance Astarian. I think he's a little too earnest for Mr. Vampire Man, especially early in the journey. But I do think Halson would try. And I do think he'd make some progress. Um, I worry that Halson does like a project and that he would see Astarian as a project. And is that a healthy way to view a romantic partner? No, it's not. That's why he's number four. Come on. Come on. She would. Astarian would turn the charm on on her because she's so big and strong and she could protect him. But then she couldn't touch him. So he wouldn't have to fall into that trap for himself. And they could get genuinely comfortable with each other and learn about each other and their boundaries. And then they could fall in love. Carlac would see the good in him, no problem. She would. She would actually absolutely pursue a starian and see kind of past that facade after a while. I do think she'd fall for it at first, but I think she would see past it later. Honestly, I can see Carlac with pretty much any of the companions, like pursuing them actively. She's just so full of love. But I do think that she would find Astarian funny and charming and that she would tear Cazador apart with her teeth. Also, I just know she's so full of blood to give. I am a blood weave truther to the point where I know what the catchy fandom name is for Gale and Astarian <laughs> as a ship. Do I think Gale's the most likely to pursue Astarian? No, I don't. Um, I do think that he figures out that Astarian is a vampire on like um, day one, doesn't tell anyone, stays wrapped up in his own secrets, and issues. I know the goof is that Gale comes on too strong. I don't think he does that to a Starian in this scenario. Like, I don't think Gale is tripping over himself for the mean vampire in Act One. Now, uh, post orb stabilization, post we're all having feelings about the world ending and what our future is going to look like after that, and we're having heart to hearts around the campfire. Once we get into Act Two, now we're cooking with gas. After the game, Gale is taking that man to his tower and devoting his life to finding a cure for vampirism. 
They're the bitchiest gays at the bar. I do think they're perfect for each other after you get past a certain point in the game. I did romance a star in a scale in my origin run, and it was beautiful, and I'm biased. Monster and Monster Hunter power couple is so goddamn powerful. And don't tell me, Will Ravenguard wouldn't get a little caught up in the Blade of Frontiers, savior of all, fairy tale prince, rescuer of damsels, shtick, and devote himself to saving his starion from his terrible, terrible life in Baldur's Gate. Oh, Will knows Kazador Sar. He must. He grew up in the circles of nobility. I think that it would start off as a little bit of weird, misplaced, like, guilt. And again, that fairy tale prince, let me save you, before those walls got broken down <laughs> a little bit more and they actually got to know each other. Also, Will thinks Astarian is funny. That's important because if you don't think he's funny, you're never making it past Act 1 <laughs> with him around. He would also come in immediately knowing that that man's a vampire. He wouldn't think it was a secret. Even, I don't think. <laughs> They'd be so cute. Let Astarian terrorize Duke Ravengard at some sort of fancy dinner while Will tries not to look really amused about it. I think they've both earned that. Oh, God, what's the line that Astarian says about Will? Will's the sort of prince type I would have once dreamed of marrying when I was about 13. Just feels like we're protesting a little bit too much, even when nobody <laughs> accused you of anything. Next. Which companion of Baldur's Gate 3 fantasy game that takes place in Faerun Dungeon Dragons is taking first place in Mario Kart Rainbow Road? I know the answer. <laughs> Maybe the Elf Song Tavern has a GameCube somewhere that they can all use. Don't think about it too hard. I do also know that they're all going to argue about who gets to be Princess Peach. It's up to you who wins that particular fight. I'm just here to tell you who's the best at Rainbow Road. It's not Jahira because Jahira is not playing Mario Kart. She thinks that video games rot your brain. I just know it. Halson is 350 years old and the size of a small elephant. He would not have any interest in Mario Kart outside of the joy that it brings his friends, and he would barely be able to hold the controller. I'm picturing GameCube controllers because that's, that's what I grew up with, but it's actually even funnier to imagine him with Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons he would break them. Also, I do think Halson is like intensely non-competitive when it comes to games. I can't see him caring. Eighth place is Astarian. Look at this man. Look at him. And tell me he isn't falling off the rainbow road every 15 seconds. Look at him and tell me he isn't driving over his own banana peels in the road. Lie to me. Minsk is in seventh, largely because it would make Astarian so mad that Minsk keeps beating him when Minsk is continually having to ask which button you hold down <laughs> to accelerate <laughs> and which one is the brake. He, he's also going to break the controller if he's not careful. I think Minsk is just weirdly lucky at Mario Kart. I don't know why, but it does feel correct. Sixth place is Gale. Gale Dicarios is perfectly passable at Mario Kart. Completely average. God, he'd be so mad about that. I think Will is pretty good at Mario Kart, and I think he's pretty good at not falling off of the edge of Rainbow Road, but I can't put him any higher because uh, the man does only have one eye. And I feel like that puts him at somewhat of a disadvantage. Like, I don't think he's played since losing the eye, you know? So I, I do think it, it's just a little bit of a setback for him. Okay, so Lazelle in fourth place is disingenuous because actually what I think is Shadowheart and Lazelle found a safe and palatable way to keep trying to kill each other. <laughs> and it's fun. And it's funny. Imagine how much fun they would have post becoming friends. They trust each other with their lives now. <laughs> Slamming each other off of Rainbow Road. <laughs> they have a reason to just safely 
push each other off of cliffs. I think they would have such a good time. I think they'd always be neck and neck with each other, just trading who's winning all the time, like super focused, completely locked into the screen. <laughs> No control over what their non-Mario Kart body is doing. Just like leaning over half on top of Halson, who's just very pleasantly <laughs> losing right next to them. <laughs> if Mario Kart was canon in Baldur's Gate, Carlac would have grown up playing Mario Kart every day. She would have been a Mario Kart kid. She knows Rainbow Road like it is the streets of Baldur's Gate itself, and she will show no mercy on that racetrack. Absolutely none. I don't think she's involved in the fight over who gets to uh, play Peach, though. I think she plays Dry Bones. That leaves our Rainbow Road Grand Champion to be Minthara. Minthara whips ass at Mario Kart. I will not be swayed from this opinion. She's a Mario Kart prodigy, stone-faced the entire time, except for the very end after she wins, she unleashes one of those little <laughs> those little unhinged laughs she does <laughs> in everybody's faces. I love her. Next. Which companion is most likely to keep Scratch, the dog you pick up in Act 1, after the end of the game? No, I don't like Scratch's canon ending that you learn about at the Withers party in the epilogue. What do you mean? Some random child has my dog. That's my dog. I have my dog. Actually, Mindy can get a different dog. That's my dog. So... Who's most likely to keep him? Least likely to keep Scratch is Carlac. Not because she doesn't want to, but she, um, can't, uh, can't. Sort of in any of her endings, she cannot keep the dog. If she sorts that all out, she would love to see him again and maybe, uh, visit whoever does end up keeping him. She loves that dog, but, um... No, she's not bringing Scratch with her wherever she's going. Ninth place, I've got Lazel because 99 times out of 100, she leaves for space. I think, like, actually flies off into space. You probably shouldn't bring the dog to space. That hasn't gone well in our realm historically. Also, I don't, I don't even think she really got, like, attached <laughs> To scratch, I'm not convinced she understands the concept of pets. Jahira's kids do not need a dog. She does not want them to have a dog. She will be rushing this dog into someone, anybody's arms, so that her kids don't find out. There's a dog somewhere that needs a home. I also, I, I just don't see her as a dog person. Like, at least not, not puppies. Scratch might be fine. But Jahira prefers to be nomadic and, and do big, dangerous missions all the time. And she wouldn't want to bring Scratch into that situation. So the only other option would be to leave Scratch with her kids. And again, I don't... She's not going to give her kids a dog. <laughs> Minthara goes back to the Underdark to pursue personal vendettas and cause problems. I think she would petition to take Scratch because in her own words... She likes the dog, but I think there's better places for Scratch to go. <laughs> so they would all tell her no. This is a big vetoing Minthara kind of video, I guess. I'm sorry, Minthara. I love you. Sixth place, I've got a star in, and I do think it depends on which ending he gets because Mr. Vampire Ascendant should certainly not have a dog. He shouldn't have any pets and also... Maybe you shouldn't have any friends. But a good ending, Astarian, also probably no. I'm still going to go with that's not a great situation for Scratch. I don't think he'd want to keep Scratch anyway. I'm not saying he doesn't like Scratch. I think he likes Scratch just fine. I think he just recognizes that he's not the best home for him. Will, for me, very much has to be in the middle because it, again, very much depends on the ending that he gets. In the ending where he stays in Baldur's Gate... I very much think he should keep the dog in the ending where he stays in Faerun, but not in Baldur's Gate. I do still think that he would benefit from keeping Scratch around, and Scratch would love hanging out with him being a ranger. Um, in the ending where he does not stay in Faerun proper, please don't take the dog. 
Don't leave him here. Don't take him with you there, bud. Fourth is Gale. Do I think Gale is a dog person? No, I do not. Do I think Gale is one of the only characters that owns real estate <laughs> and could reliably house a dog? Yes, I do. But what about his bad ending? Then Tara gets Scratch. She'll need a new pet anyways. Win-win situation. I think Minsk could use as many animal friends as possible. Boo is great. Boo does great things for Minsk. I think Minsk could just benefit from having a dog. Scratch could help him make non-terrible decisions whenever Jahir is busy. I think. I trust Scratch with that. Halson is such an obvious choice that this feels silly. He would have long conversations with Scratch while they rebuild the lands recently freed from the Shadow Curse. And they would be happy together forever. It's Halson! But, and this is maybe a controversial opinion, I'm putting Shadowheart at number one. And I actually think in... Both of her endings, she should get to keep the dog. <laughs> she needs Scratch. Also, in her good happy ending after her dramatic makeover, they'd match. Pretty lady on a farm and her matching dog. She loves animals and she wants to live in a zoo. And I think she should have everything she wants forever. Next. Actually brought you around false pretenses because these last two are not ranking them one to ten at all. I want to tell you what competition reality show I think each of the Baldur's Gate 3 companions could win. I love reality TV so much, and I feel pretty confident that each of them could win one reality TV show. Make no mistake, I think these people would be bad at every single reality show. <laughs> Other than the one I'm giving them here. Okay, ready, go. Halson is winning Survivor. He's personable and outdoorsy. He'd make such good alliances and he'd win so many challenges. He's perfect. No one should be surprised by that. Why can't Jahira be winning Survivor? Because Jahira's winning Fear Factor. She feels no fear and would be down to eat bugs. Why were so many of the challenges on that show? About eating bugs, though, actually. Now that I'm, I'm reflecting, and I only remember... They ate so many bugs. Astarian is winning Project Runway. He would. He, he just would. Making fantastic things in strict conditions out of non-optimal materials. Yeah. Yeah. We all know that he sews. Have you seen the fan art of him becoming a tailor after the game ends? Because I think about it. Every day. Also, he is bitchy enough to win. You cannot win that show if you're not mean, I think. It's been a while since I've watched it, but I do remember that. For Carlac, I've got to give her Forged in Fire, that reality show about making different weapons with, like, traditional blacksmithery. I, just, I think she could do it. And I, more importantly, I think she'd look so good while doing it. Will Ravengard, not really a competition reality show, but we're putting him on deal or no deal. And that's enough to say about that one, I think. You gotta hear me out here about Minthara dancing with the stars. Think about it. She's cutthroat. She's athletic. She would look so pretty in all the dancing outfits. She would give it her everything. It would become her entire life. I think one of those longer shows where it takes months and months to get through is perfect for her. It, it's good. And you might be thinking, don't you need to be a celebrity to be on Dancing with the Stars? And I would say, she is. Lazelle was trained from birth to win American Ninja Warrior. I know it to be true. She would go up that vertical wall at the end of the course without breaking a sweat. Get Yankee Ninja Warrior. <laughs> We're putting Gail on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? And you might be thinking, there are so many trivia shows where he could show off how many things he knows and get money about it. Why can't he be on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Why can't that be what he wins? Because this one, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, is explicitly about knowing more than the other people you're standing right next to, particularly things that you think everybody should already know. That's his favorite thing. Now, Minsk, we're putting on the Great British Baking Show. But 
It's a ratatouille situation with Boo. And you might be thinking to yourself, but Vince doesn't have any hair, nor does he wear a big hat. So how is Boo supposed to ratatouille him? And I, I'm so glad you asked. Boo just sort of sits in his shirt pocket and tilts around like Minsk is some sort of big tilt-a-whirl, and that's how they cook. <laughs> also, also, Minsk is just such a big delight that the other contestants would love him so much. Noel would get such a kick out of him that I, I do think it would save him and propel him to the end. Obviously, they don't need that. <laughs> that talented Boo is with a whisk. But <laughs> but Shadowheart is winning America's next top model. She has the discipline. She has the face card. Is this just me saying that Shadowheart is very pretty? Maybe. She is. Uh, I also think that she could handle the severe mental and emotional psychological warfare that they put those girls through on that show. I, she's been training for that her entire life. I think she could do it. Uh, next list. If the Baldur's Gate 3 companions were cursed in the same way as the characters from hit ABC TV show Once Upon a Time, what would their curse persona, their cursona, if you will, be? Who are they in Storybook? <laughs> Storybook, Maine. <laughs> This idea is courtesy of my friend Robin, Captain Crail on Twitter, or X, if you'd like to find them there. Thank you, Robin, for this very cursed suggestion. Okay, so when you're deciding what somebody's persona is, there are two very important things to keep in mind. Um, the first is that you aren't changing their personality, so whatever you choose has to be something that already suits them and the life that they're living. But the second thing is that they have to be miserable about it. There has to be some sort of irony or punishment because th the curse Ona is inherently being kept from a happy ending. That's what the curse is for. So if the companions got cursed right before the game started, we'll say, um, what is their curse Ona? I thought about this for too long. I guess that's how I know I'm right, but so much of my mental energy went towards this <laughs> shadow heart. It's going to be a nun, blindly devoted to worship forever. Hers, hers is pretty cut and dry, uh, I think, and also tragic. You know, if only there were pretty ladies in this town that could teach her there's more to live for. Minsk is a statue. Sorry, Minsk, a stone lord. Indeed, the evil mayor is bringing you back as a statue that your best friend doesn't even recognize, doesn't even know that it's you, not in the sense that, that she doesn't know that it's you in there, just she doesn't even know who that statue is depicting. You're standing in the center of town. There's a big statue, and there's a little hamster living in a burrow nearby at the base, and sometimes Jahira's kids come and they feed it because they think it's cute, and they're right. Speaking of Jahira, her persona is a stay-at-home mom. Like, she recently had and lost some sort of high-powered corporate job. I mean, like, not really, because it's a persona. But she thinks she did. She thinks that's what her history is. But when her husband died, she had to stay at home with the kids because her husband used to be the one to stay at home with the kids. And now she's all resentful, and she sneaks off for, like, days at a time to go camping alone in the woods. And I am making myself sad thinking about Jahira's, so let's do a different one. Okay, follow me here. Minthara co-owns a greenhouse, and she runs the half of it that is focused on deadly plants, all poisons and things that can be used to create poisons. And she's so into it. She's so invested. And she co-owns that greenhouse with Halson, and he takes care of the plants that aren't for poison, and they hate each other so bad. This is a mirror of their get-along tent in the game, where if you recruit both of them in a good playthrough, they have to share a tent, <laughs> because it was never the original intention for recruiting both of them to be possible. So they just exist in the same space. This is that. I'm doing that, but in Maine. <laughs> 
they're both in charge and they're both miserable. And Halsey doesn't want to be in charge, but he can't let her be in charge. <laughs> so he has to stay in charge. Uh, but also, both of them have the same understanding that no one can mess with their greenhouse buddy, with the co owner of their greenhouse. And yet, yes, they are always low key hypothetically, thinking of ways to take the other one out in the real world. This is not fantasy land. In real Maine, they are constantly conspiring about how they can be the one to take sole ownership of this greenhouse. Minthara is ready to catch a charge about it if she were to somehow get caught. Lazelle is a gym teacher, harsh, unyielding, teaching children how to hone their bodies at the expense of the rest of them, running the pacer like it's the most important thing any of them will ever do. And she's never given a chance to get kinder or, or softer because everybody's afraid of her and how easily she could beat them up, even though she is, of course, very small. I don't even think Lazelle would be having that bad of a time in Maine because I think she would like dodgeball that much. And good for her. Carlac would be a mechanic, leaning into the irony of being able to fix anything she can get her hands on, um, but she would be unable to fix her own heart. Not that she would know that she has an infernal machine for a heart in this universe, but you know, in, in fantasy land, in Faerun, she was looking for a way to fix her heart, and now here in Maine, she can fix everything else. You understand. You, go where I'm, you know where I'm going with this. Also, she specialize in motorcycles and ride a lot of motorcycles. Um, Carlac on a motorcycle. Car um, uh, Car Carlac plus motorcycles. Astarian is a professional locksmith, and he uses that to be a problem in his free time. Locksmith slash thief. I can't go with anything else for him because <laughs> any other option is too sad and heavy to be like a fun once upon a time persona. He picks locks for money, and he has the world's shittiest department. And I think he gets to have His Majesty, the, the Sphinx cat from The Last Light Inn. I think he and His Majesty share a very, very bad apartment. Gail's got to be stuck in academia but not progressing at all, like a research assistant or a TA or something like that, like a PhD student. A guy facing constant red tape, just not allowed to move up in his field. Gets no respect for knowing all the things that he knows. He's the guy drinking coffee until 3 a.m. and just destroying his body, hoping to gain another line on his transcript, on his resume. Uh, probably getting his degree in, like, physics or something that feels right for him. Uh, if Mistra is here, she's his supervisor, Obs, um, but if she's not here, then he's doing this all, like, online or long distance, and he doesn't even actually know who it is he's trying to impress. He just knows there is a higher power that he cannot reach, that he cannot understand or get a hold of, uh, and he's making no ground. God, he'd be so... He's probably the most miserable one, and Jahira actively hates her five kids and runs away from them all the time. Will, I think, has got to be the mayor's kid, like Duke Ravengard is Mayor Ravengard now, or if we still have Mayor Regina Mills, if we have just everybody else in Storybrooke, Maine, and also these ten assholes, then Duke Ravengard is like Sergeant Major Ravengard, and Will is his son that he expects to also get into the military. But Will doesn't want to be in the military. He wants to be a professional ballroom dancer. I don't know how to work Mizora into this without it getting too real and too sad. So maybe she isn't here. We can just go with the daddy issues and not the evil possessive lady with incredible power over him issues. He can deal with her when they break their curse, release their cursonas, and they go back to fantasy land. That's when we can bring Mizora. Mizora is a season two situation. Season one is about how bad his dad hates him. Just like the real acts in Baldur's Gate, but in reverse. And there it is. That was, that's my last list for the video. Thank you so much for listening to me talk about Baldur's Gate 3 even more. As always, please tell me your own rankings in the comments. Let me know where we agree and where we disagree so hard. We may as well have played different games entirely. Connect your brain worm to my brain worm. And let's rock out. Brain worm party. 
I promise there is more Once Upon a Time coming. Um, but the thing is, is that I tripped and fell and started teaching kindergarten full time. And for some reason, that has made interacting with Once Upon a Time feel like slamming my head into a wall. It's happening. But I got to get through the wall all the way first, you know? Enjoy this for now. An extra thank you to my beautiful patrons on Patreon. They picked out the cosplay for this video, and they are the reason that our video quality has so vastly improved since the last time you've seen me. Those patrons such as Alcyon Hero, Annie G, Autumn Vector, Britty, Chatty C, Jelly Bun, Ollie D, The Sheriff, Zachary Fly, Zebby Lown, A Bitter Taste Of, Agamame, Aiden So Wood, Amy Ernst, AJ Holian, Akadoroku, Alex Pluto Murphy, Alex Stevens, Alex Is Not Amazing, Alice, Alex, uh, Anya Solis Lunaire, Anna Elise, Anna Kay, and uh, Anomalous Bones, Argentum Inc., Artemis Nix, Ashley Figura, Ash Raven, Avery Jack Thayer, Azula's Tale, Azur, Babity Kate, Botakid, Bailey Wind, Barb, Barbarians are the best class, Beard Acknowledge, Becca B, Bex Rhodes, Beck B, Bees, Ben the Person, Bethany Draws Art, Bobby Banner, Box of Cherubs, Brain Boy, Bubblegum Bell, Calvin Boyce, Carly Hartle, Caroline Odin, Kelt Code, Cheyenne, Chris Kuzde, Chronic Escapee, Caleb, Clever Name, Cloud and Mercury, Kodja, Ostalasa, Cole, <laughs> Cursed, Galatea, Dakota Luanski, Danny, Daniel, Declan Roof, Deals, Delaney, Devin Ellert, Drake, Ed Slushy, Eli Gibson, El Verona, Elysium, Embers, Emma B, Envy Ennui, Eric, Aaron Rumsey, Evil Scrump, Foolery with Nori, Fox Martin, Fumblebee, Finch R, Gabby, Garrett T, Giacomo, the court jester, <laughs> Giant, Gnarl, Gregory Wise, Harper Hex, Heather Reed, uh, Henry Hunter Kylie, Infinity Girl, Insane in the Brain, Izzy Alexander, Jackie, Jacob Chisholm, James David, James Somers, James Jeffrey Wickstrom, Jenny Waboom, Jericho, Jessica Page, Jordy LaForge, Joshua Caliendo, Jules, Julie Stonk, Cavo Conrad, Carissa, Kathleen, Catherine Hill, Kelsey Rodriguez, Curb.jpg. Everlyn C, Kian Smith, Kitty Kitty Large Paws, Kyle Richardson, Kylie Dactyl, Lady of Autumn, Lawson Lee, Lemon, Lemonberry Conda, Liam John Lawson, Libby, Leah Spitalowitz, Lizzie Gale, Lorenzo, Lucy Schneider, Lula, Mackenzie Smith, Marcel Barth, Marielle, Martine, Mary R, Masked Reader, Matt Ross, Matt Dam, May, Michaela Phillips, Minnie's Mayhem, Most Spooky, Molly Early, Morgan Potter, Miss Cheerio, Murph Wazir, Nathan Schiffelt, Nick the Brick, Nicole Wilson, Noah, Nick Snacks, uh, Olafia, Olive, Oski the Bard, Pete Davidson, Philip Dameron, Fix, Pobledo, Poetic Cinema, Rookie Baby, Rosemary Finch, Rowan C, Rune Tannen, Sal, Sarah Gallen, Sea Bass of the Sea, Simon Morrow, Spapples, Spencer Lowe, SSC, Steen, Steph Bell, Sticks, Sydney, Tex the Gentle Giant, The Plum Sater, Toby Springer, Tyler Whitsitt, Unholy Fish, V, Val Hallen, Vanilla and Zucker, Void Lich, <laughs> Vunks Vunks, Will, Wood, Woody Daniel, Ngve Leo, and Zachary McMinn. I gotta put my glasses on for this bit, gang. <laughs> oh, good lord. You've all been a dream. I will see you next time. I'm still flabbergasted about how I ended up dressed for this. I was prepared to do this video in full whiteout contacts and be the murder lord's second favorite daughter or be our goth princess in like a lace-up leather top, and instead, you all wanted me to experience gender euphoria. The internet will always surprise you.